This video was sponsored by Squarespace. Check out the link down below to learn more. Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, what I'm gonna be doing is showing you probably the very best way to virtualize Windows 11 on your native Linux host. And you're gonna be able to do a lot of different things with this that you wouldn't normally be able to do, whether you're using KVM or VirtualBox. Uh, we're gonna be able to play some Steam games. Uh, the main reason I'm using it is for ArcGIS Pro, which requires some, uh, or a uh, significant amount of VRAM to actually function properly. And this right here is my instance of Windows 11. We're gonna be showing you how to install this. Now, going through the normal installation process, we'll get this up and running but there are a couple extra different things that we need to do to fix some issues and make sure that we are able to utilize our GPU to its fullest potential. And we're not gonna be using GPU pass through or we don't need a whole extra dedicated GPU to be able to do this because the software that we're gonna be using VMware actually has proprietary drivers that work really well with Windows and it actually allows us to use all the VRAM that we have available on our system. I generally prefer free and open source solutions such as VirtualBox, GNOME boxes, things like that. But proprietary with proprietary, this is a, uh, gonna give us a lot better performance. And of course, like any other guides, so I'm gonna go ahead and link down below to any references and there'll be a link to a full tutorial over on techcut.tv. So if anything changes or if there's anything I need to add in addition to what I'm gonna talk about in this video, you could go check out that page. Now the very first thing that you're gonna to want to do is go ahead and actually pick up VMware Workstation Player. There is both paid and free versions. If you're gonna be using this for commercial purposes, you are going to need a license. But if you're just gonna be using it personally like we are today, you can go ahead and use the free license. So go over to their webpage. You could click download now under Linux here and it will download this. I'll leave instructions on how to actually go ahead and install this. Luckily we are in, or I'm currently in Arch. So all I need to do is type in yay and VMware we go ahead and type this in, it's gonna bring up a list of all the different options we have available to us. And you can see for me, the fourth option is VMware Workstation. This is what I have installed. And this is what I recommend you install. It's gonna work perfectly fine. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out real quick. Once you do install it, and I go ahead and search up VMware, you're gonna have the VMware Player and VMware Workstation. Player is what we're gonna be using. That's basically what's free to us. If I go ahead and open up VMware Workstation, you can see right here, it's gonna be asking us for a license because the actual workstation is pro, but it does ship with Player, which I have right here. So you can see I already have a Windows 11 instance. I'm gonna run through this process again for the installation and some fixes that we're gonna be doing. Now, if you don't already have a Windows 11 ISO image, you can just head over to the main Windows download site right here under ISO. Go ahead, select your download, click on download, and then it's gonna ask for your language. Once you go ahead and give it your language, click confirm, then it's gonna begin the download process. Now in my downloads here, you can see I already have the Windows 11 ISO right there. So once you do have that available to you, what we're gonna to want to do is create a new virtual machine. So click on that. And then from there, you're gonna to want to select the ISO image you just downloaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to browse and select this right here, click open, and now we could go ahead and go next. Here we're gonna to want to go Microsoft Windows, Windows 10 and later. Go next, here we could give it a name. I'm just gonna call this Windows 11. And now for location, you could really put this wherever you want, but generally what I like to do is put this in the .vmware folder in my home directory. You can see we have Windows 11 right there. I'm gonna call this uh, Windows underscore tut for tutorial. I'm gonna end up getting rid of this instance when I'm done here. Hit open, you saw it made that folder. It's gonna go into Windows Tut, and I'm actually gonna call this uh, tutorial right here. You can call it really whatever you want. I'm gonna go next. Here we have the maximum disk size. Now 60 gigs isn't necessarily enough. I think the minimum requirement is like 62 or 68. I recommend giving it at least 80 gigabytes. My main one, I gave 120, so I actually have a little bit of a wiggle worm. And here, this is optional as well. Splitting the disk into uh, multiple files makes it easier to move around, but depending on your disk size, it can uh, reduce performance. I generally just keep this as a single file. So let's go next. And here we have a rundown of everything so far. What we're gonna want to do is customize the hardware. Here is where we can go ahead and give it some RAM. 
I do recommend giving it like half of your system memory. If you only have eight gigs on your system, you might not have that good performance. If you have 16 gigs, that's pretty good. Give this Windows machine eight. I have 32 gigs, so I'm gonna give this Windows machine 16 gigabytes of RAM. Under processors, you're gonna to want to give it more, hopefully. This is the uh, thread count, I'm pretty sure. So I have 16 threads available. I could give it eight if I would like to. At least that's the case for my uh, Ryzen CPU that I have. So everything else should be good. If we go to network adapter, NAT is gonna be perfectly fine. We will or probably have an issue with this that we will be fixing. And then under display, you're gonna to want to make sure that 3D graphics is enabled. And right here, this is what makes this beautiful or makes uh, VMware beautiful compared to uh, some of the other solutions is graphics memory. You can see I have access to the full eight gigs that's available on my GPU. I could give it less, but that's not really necessary. I'm gonna have it or allow it full access to that. And this is in comparison to like the 128 or 256 megabytes that we are uh, limited to with something like VirtualBox. So this all looks good. I'm gonna hit close for now and we can see the change. Hard disk looks good. We have eight CPU cores. So let's go ahead and hit finish. And I do recommend you read over this. We are gonna be doing both of these, installing the guest operating system as well as VMware tools. So close that out. And at first, it's gonna try booting right away. I missed it. So what I'm gonna do is go to power. I'm gonna reset the guest, hit yes, and then restart. And then I'm gonna make sure to hit any key to boot from the CD or DVD. And this is gonna boot us into this Windows image. Now, while this loads up, the very first thing that we're gonna do is make it so it will bypass the TMP requirements. And we're gonna be doing that through the registry editor. I'm gonna run this normal first because sometimes it might work for you depending on your hardware and your system configuration. So it's good to run through this and then get presented with the error and then fix it from there. So I don't have a product key. And for this instance, I'm just gonna go with Windows 11 Pro, go next. And then we can see that this PC cannot run Windows. So what we could do is just go back one real quick. And then from there, what we're gonna to want to do is hold down shift and hit F 10. What this is gonna do is open up a little terminal here. And from there, we could just do reg edit, hit enter. And now we have our registry editor. So from there, we're gonna to want to go to local machine. So this one right here. And then we're gonna go down to system, open that up. And then we're gonna to go to setup. Now under setup, you're gonna to want to right click there, new and select key. Now this key right here, or this little folder, we're gonna call this lab config. Make sure all your capitalization is uh, correct. Hit enter. And now within lab config here, what we're gonna to want to do is right click and create a new D word 32 bit value. And for this value, we're gonna to want to type in bypass TPM check with check capitalized, just like that. And then we'll click over here and then double click on bypass TPM check, change the value data to one and then hit okay. And now we should be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. If you're still getting that issue, uh, again, I'll link down below to some other registry edits that you could go ahead and make. But for what we're doing, that should be sufficient. So now that that's been changed, let's go ahead and click next. And we should have a better luck here. There we go. So now instead of getting a, uh, unable to install, we have the license agreement. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. Go next, uh, we'll do a custom, select our drive with our 80 gigs that we gave it, click next, and now it's running. So while this finishes up, it's not gonna take too long at all because it's all on your system, especially if you have an SSD. Uh, we're gonna thank the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is a wonderful platform to go ahead and publish your websites with ease. If you're somebody who doesn't like really playing around in the terminal that much, you don't want to build your own custom servers and you just need a easy, intuitive web builder, Squarespace is a fantastic option for you. With integrated SEO and analytic tools, everything you're gonna need is in one place. So make sure you go ahead and check out the link down below to get 10% off your order. Now with that, we have it booting here. Right there you see it says no 3D support available from the host. That is one of the issues uh, that we're gonna be fixing in just a moment. And right now this is getting ready here. Another issue that we're probably gonna face is an issue with this uh, properly communicating with our network drivers. All right, so we are now booting into the Windows setup process. I'm gonna go ahead and select United States here and let's go US 
and let's go ahead and skip our next keyboard. So right here, let's connect to a network, Ethernet not connected. So that is a, like I said, another really common issue that we're gonna have to fix a little bit later. Uh, depending on the state of Windows, you may need to fix this prior to, uh, or you may need to shut this down and fix this right now. But uh, if I say I don't have internet, we will be able to continue with the limited setup that might change in the future. So just a little heads up on that. So continue with this process as you normally would. I'm gonna type in my name, give it a super strong, complicated, secure password. For this, uh, find my device, I disable that. I keep diagnostic data just in case if I want to uh, enroll in the uh, Insider program. I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want that, except, and there we go. Once it's done doing whatever it needs to do, it's going to boot us into Windows. All right, so Windows is booted up and look, we have a rare instance here of uh, empty ads <laughs> it can't pull all the stuff it wants to pull because it hasn't gotten internet yet okay so the first thing we do before we fix the two issues we just encountered is we're going to go up here to virtual machine and install these vmware tools so let's go ahead and hit install and this is just like installing the uh, virtualbox guest edition drivers uh, we're going to open up our explorer here and we can see the drive so from there we can go ahead and do the uh, setup 64. So I'm going to go ahead and run this as the administrator. Yes. And then it's going to go ahead and prep and install these tools. There we go. And this is going to give us an access to a lot of the different features and whatnot. If I go here to custom and hit next, you can see all the specific things that it's going to be installing, mostly all drivers and things like that. I'm going to go back and go just go with the complete installation here and hit install. All right, and then once it's done, we could go ahead and hit finish. It's gonna ask us to restart or manually restart. Let's go no for now, and then we're gonna go to um, shut down the virtual machine so we could do it through here if we would like to. So just completely shut this down and let it go through the uh, proper shutdown process here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is fix that network issue. So if we go ahead, open up our terminal, all we need to do to fix this is run this command. This is a system CTL command, so we're enabling a service, and we are enabling. The enable means that this will automatically enable on boot, and dash dash now means it will enable this now, and this is the VMware Networks service. This doesn't automatically enable, so this is something that you're gonna want to do after you get everything set up, so we're gonna go like that type in our password. And then from there, we could go ahead and check just by switching this to status, hit enter, and we will see that it is now active and running. So that should fix that issue. So I'm gonna hit control C to get out of there. And the next thing that we're gonna do is change one of our preferences. And it's using this guide right here. The no 3D support is available from the host. This wonderful GitHub user wrote us a little thing on how to fix this. And this right here will give some notes that I do recommend you kind of read through why we're using this instead of like the QM, KVM and things like that. So I'm gonna give this a copy right here. This is allow blacklisted drivers equals true. So give that a copy. And then we're gonna want to jump back to our terminal and I'm gonna CD into our .vmware folder here. If I LS, you can see that there is a file called preferences. So from there, we're just gonna want to nano into it head down to the very bottom and give that a paste, just like that. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that VMware is completely closed down when you do this, otherwise it won't uh, work right away. So Control O to output, Control X to get out of there. And now we're gonna go ahead and open up VMware Player. And this right here, this Windows 11 tutorial is the one we just set up. So I'm gonna power this on and it should boot without any issues. And you can see right here that a lot of these have X's on them now. That's okay, if I click this, it's actually gonna let me do it. If I would have were to have clicked this before, it would have popped out an error. So now we are good to go. If I slide up, type in my password, we are now in Windows 11 and it is using all of the VRAM that we gave it. You can see right here, it is using all of the regular system memory. Everything is working fine. This is a first boot connected to the internet, so that's why the, uh, CPU is spiking real hard right now. There we go, it's starting to drop again. And if I go through and open up my DirectX diagnostic tool here and go over to display, you can see that my approximate total memory available is just over eight gigabytes. And this is using the VMware uh, SVGA 3D graphics drivers. With all the proper 3D acceleration and all that enabled, 
So now I can use graphically intensive applications on this virtual machine. It won't be like running it on native hardware, but it's going to be really, it's going to be a really good experience, especially compared to something like a virtual box or any of the alternatives. So again, as people leave comments and things come up and people have specific issues, I will be updating the actual step-by-step -step tutorial that will be linked down below. So go ahead and check that out. Any commands or anything that I did in this video will be there as well. So with all that, I do hope you enjoy running your Windows virtual machine with games or in intensive programs on your Linux machine. Another reason why you don't really need to run Windows on hardware. So with all that, I do hope you have a great day. Big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Again, check out that link to save a little bit of money and get a website up and running with ease. Thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. You all are fantastic. And with all of that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.